No, I'm actually going to because it's your training day. I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the Birmingham School of Bell Ringing. So basically, talk about how we do it here, um, which hopefully you'll find interesting. Or so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about Birmingham School of Bell Ringing. It actually makes a change for me now not to talk about central council stuff so it's actually a blessed relief um and and go back to talking about something else i really care about which is um the Birmingham school of bell ringing or the school as um as we refer to I, and i i realize i'm the um the strictly warm-up act here and that when i see screens go black at 7 15 i know what you're doing so um but never mind i'm going to i'm going to talk for about i think about 40 minutes and then you can ask questions for as long as you like. Um, I'm quite happy to ask questions. So I'm going to talk about why we set the school up, uh, what it is, uh, how it works, and, and perhaps give some, um, some idea as to whether other people could do it, um, because I'm sure others could. So it, it, it comes down to what we were seeing in the in the grassroots in the St Martin School just just before this, and um, we knew that we had towers who were struggling to teach uh, and lack of teachers, and and sort of poor standards at the basic level, and and ringers who just weren't quite making as much progress as they deserved to to make. But also, um, a, a characteristic of Birmingham is that. That we have a very very strong um, top end, so Birmingham, as you, you probably know, is renowned as a as a sort of centre of, of twelve bar ringing. Um, there, there are lots and lots of, of good ringers, but actually, and and this is quite important actually, we have lots of good ringers who don't actually ring very many peels. Um, there's quite a few uh, for midweek peels, but it's not a. St Martin's Guild has never been a Saturday peel ringing culture, um, and that, that and that becomes quite important. So we, we felt we needed to bridge the gap. We wanted to bridge that gap between the, the experts in the city centre and the, uh, the grassroots ringers in the suburban towers. Uh, most of the St Martin's Guild, to be fair, is, is suburban. And, and in, in doing that, we, so we wanted to also raise the standard of teaching. We wanted to recruit more ringers. I'd said when I took over as master at St Martin's Guild, um, about 10 years ago now that we wanted to have we didn't have one ringer per bell across the St Martin's Guild 320 odd bells in the guild and, and fewer members so I'd said we wanted to ring on every bell um, we also wanted to give more opportunities to ringers so people um, didn't give up we wanted to strengthen the local bands that were 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 not strong and, and basically unite the guild a little bit more um, it had suffered in the past from being a sort of a guild of two halves so I announced that we were going to have something that I called the Carlsberg Day. And we got a cross section of, of guild members. I think there were 15 or 16 guild members um, across all, all different towers and all different levels of experience. And we booked a, a conference room um, away, from, away from churches. We laid on some lunch. And basically, I asked this simple question, if Carlsberg made a bell ringing association, what would it look like? Sort of clean sheet of paper. How would you organise it? And we had we had two, three or four hours, and um, we had a, we had a couple of hours before lunch, and then unfortunately Claire McArdle, who's one of the the sort of driving forces of, of the St Martin's Guild, couldn't come, but she'd sent her homework, and uh, and Tracy Stevens sort of read out Claire's um, Claire's notes, which started by by Claire saying. I realise this could never happen in my lifetime, but what I think we should do is this. And she and she sent this plan, which was to have four different towers all running on a on a Saturday morning, one dealing with bell handling, one dealing with foundation skills, one teaching plane hunt and then one teaching method ringing. So focused teaching sessions with progression built in and going round. And, and having all of the, the, the point about having it all on concurrently on Saturday mornings was that it wouldn't clash with any towers own practice so people could come. So, so we talked about that for a bit. And then, and then I just said, why, what, has anyone got 
any reason why we could not do this. Um, and we couldn't really think of any reason, I mean, any reason why we couldn't do it. So, so I just said, right, we're doing it. So we'll, we, we will just do it. And, and that, was, that was April the 20th, 2013. And we said, let's do it starting at the beginning of September. Because uh, that gave us a bit of time. So, and, and I remember phoning. I remember phoning Claire from um, from the car on, on the way home, and she said, "How oh, was it went?" I said, "Well, I've got some news." I said, "You know that plan?" I said, "We're doing it," and, and she swore. Um, but anyway, it, I, I've often found the best way the, the best way of getting something done is just to announce that you're going to do it, or announce even even announce when it's going to start, um, and then you're in real trouble. But ultimately. Uh, ultimately, you sort of get there. So we started off with uh, the first week, just um, a couple of drop-in sessions for, or one drop-in session for people who are interested in learning. And we put a lot of flyers out over the summer to make sure we had the first load of recruits, and and also to talk to to helpers and uh, and just basically get everyone interested in interested in it. And and we also made the decision not to start it all at once. So of that of that four things, we decided we were just going to do tower. A and I think we we started as well with the Tower C because that matched, matched the profile of people who who wanted to join. So so we then also had some big decisions uh, we had to make in terms of how the school was going to work, and and this was probably one of the big ones. Uh, we decided that we were going to charge. We were going to charge the students. Um, we think that was quite definitely the right decision. We probably could have charged more, but if we had charged more, we wouldn't have known what to do with the money because it's um, it's difficult enough to spend the income that the school gets as it is. So, and, and also we decided uh, those founding those founding fathers of the of the school that we wanted the school to out survive us if if we cease to be officers of the St Martin's Guild. So Claire and Tony and John Anson and and we, we we set it up um, with the Guild's blessing. We set it up as a separate uh, CIA with its own bank account, uh, with us as trustees. Um, we, we also appointed um, Pip Penny um, as a as a, an independent trustee. We've got some waiting in the waiting room, I'll just admit to them. Um, we got Pip Penny as an independent trustee, so it's a, so it's separate. But but it, I mean, it looks it looks and feels, it smells like it's St Martin's Guild. It's it's consistent branding, and of course, it is for um, primarily for members of the St Martin's Guild, but not exclusively. So, another key decision. Going to move on. Another key decision was we we, we obviously needed a, a syllabus. And given that we'd announced this on April the 19th and we were starting on September the 5th uh, and some of us had holidays, we had to, we decided it was easier just to borrow one. Um, and ART has got a syllabus already, the um, Learning the Ropes programme, and we were um, keen on ART and some of us were ART tutors. So we thought, well, let's just use Learn the Ropes. And and, and actually the, the thinking of those four, those four stages that Claire had was very much around learning the ropes you probably guessed when you saw it so so learning the ropes using learning the ropes was was quicker it also added initially and and certainly on an ongoing basis it's added added a bit of credibility um to to tell people who don't know anything about ringing that you're following a a, a program um that's that's clearly got professionally produced uh, material and banners etc it just gives you a little it gives it a little bit of a, a bit more credibility um, it, it gives us the structure. There's just so much material and, and stuff behind the learning the rope scheme, the, the certificates and, and all that. It just it just helps an awful lot to put something like this together. Um, and it also provides it provides consistency of teaching. I know some people criticize art for for that. But but what we find is that um, it, you, you can pick you can pick up it, it doesn't matter who teaches a particular session because there's a degree of consistency and we, we know what's going on so people get taught uh, and obviously there are lots of different ways of, of teaching um but everybody gets taught very very consistently and uh, uh and we all think we all think the same way so that's so that's good the <clears throat> this is just um 
an example behind the scenes i wouldn't say there's i wouldn't say there's a stack of technology most of it is built on sort of google sheets and google docs and and um, I mean, there, is, there are automated things in here uh, that, that, that we've written. But this is just an example of the of the email that goes out um, midweek to uh, the, the, this is sent, the one that is sent to the students, which is copied to all of the, um, the tutors and helpers for a particular week, which shows you um, who's coming um, to each of the each of the towers that's running. Um, that, that's just a note of who's if you're on if you're pink and only one that you've only got one week's payment left. We do actually um, in, in, insist not insist but but the, the tutors the the students come every week. It's not a it's not an OAS. I can come once a month or I can come every other week. I, if I come if I fancy it. It is a commitment. We encourage them to pay for ten weeks in advance, and it's and you, and you come every week. <clears throat> and and at the bottom of the the email that goes to the to the uh, students and there's another one that goes just to the tutors and helpers so that they can see who's coming to each tower the, there's a line that says something like this is this is the same degree of commitment that you'd have if you had a court appeal or appeal in your diary you you turn up um you turn up on time um if you if you if, if, you, if for any reason and we know it all happens if you have to drop out you either replace yourself um or you or you just tell the the, the teachers or the the, the staff um, that you've got to drop out. So so by and large, everyone comes, um, and that's including including the teachers and, and helpers. And then and then there are other systems behind the scenes. Uh, sort of about mid mid month before the next month, you, there's a doodle poll which which sets out the the program for the following month, and and everybody completes it. Um, yes yes possibly if you're desperate, um, which is quite an important answer. And and no, so so Claire and and her team sort of piece together um, who's who's coming and and then it and it all fits together. And behind the scenes, there's there's sort of database with with each week and each tower um, beginning beginning to take form. Because of course, by by about the Thursday before the Saturday, and if, remember this is happening every single Saturday. By the Thursday, th there's basically a program of 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 which students the students are fairly static. Um, who's teaching which tower and who their helpers are and you, you you we aim to have as many helpers as there are bells because that enables um, helpers to stand behind as well um, and it enables the tutor not necessarily have to ring themselves so it's sort of six or seven helpers and it, these are this is all six six or seven helpers four five or six students across three or four towers every single Saturday. So, so it's quite an undertaking, but um, it sort of works. And um, so does it work? Well, it does work. Um, the fact that it was founded in 2013 and we're still talking about it in 2020 um, shows that it works. Um, oh, well, oh, well over 100 um, students have come all the way through the system so I shouldn't really call it a system, but have, have benefited from the school um, to a lesser or greater degree. They don't all start at the beginning. Um, we, get, we get people who start, who've, who've learnt, who've learnt at the, another tower and then come um, late, later on. <laughs> and actually we find that those who've started at the school from the very start go through faster. Um, quite often you find people you, you, who think they can handle and we take them back and uh, and and start again, or, or make some corrections, because it just is so much easier, as as you all know, to teach people um, plain hunt and and other other and methods if the the fundamentals are right. And we spend we spend quite a bit of time uh, level level two, or what we call the the foundation skills level, where people get used to moving bells around and doing dodges and 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 kaleidoscope exercises and hole pull and stand and switcheroo and all these things that the helpers can't remember what they're all called, but we get very very used to running them. They are absolute key to this uh, and get used in towers. We've got there are towers in some master school now who who ring who ring switcheroo and hole pull and stand and. And um, and these things just because it's good. Um, so so we do quite a lot of that. Uh, so how long does it take? I mean, the majority of the the majority of the students have been um, middle aged rather than very young. Um, hence, sense that if you if you're thinking those averages look quite high, that's the reason. 
when, when we have youngsters coming through, we tend to, without wanting to upset um, the older learners, fast track them through. And you probably take, we, we took three, three busker um, people who joined from the university last year and we fast tracked them through and they probably only spent three weeks at each tower. And we, and we just pushed them through um, and organized separate towers just to, get, just to get them through. And we've had other youngsters which sort of go through like this, like a dose of salts. Um, much to the, I mean, not annoyance, but they, they, they sort of older learners, of course, watch and think, oh, well, I wish I was, I wish I'd learned when I was 10. Um, but there, that's, and, and, them, and that, and those, those maximums, that, that also um, leads us on to what becomes quite a difficult question sometimes. So that, that, the, that 80%, 83% retention, most people who leave do so before they um, reach level one. So when you're a sort of competent uh, handler and you can and you can ring, get ready to ring rounds, etc. And and usually it's it's people just realising it's not for them. Um, we've had a couple lose from ill health, uh, leave from ill health, one went to live abroad, or they find the commitments um, too much. But it's basically that's when we lose them. Once once people have got to level one, they tend to stick, um, or, or just or just go and ring at their local tower. Um, and, and even those who, who leave tend to tend to still be ringing with their local bands. Um, and I'll just say one more thing about the retention. We, it, the, the comes, there comes a point, usually at the end of level two, which is um, foundation skills. Somebody can ring around some core changes perfectly well. They could probably ring the tenant behind, uh, learn the ropes level two. But you can tell. We think we think it's quite clear at that point whether somebody is going to be a method ringer or not and, and and also so that's a conversation you have to have because i mean it's it's almost a case of being cruel to be kind but we, we don't anymore we, we we thought at the beginning of this that we could teach anybody to ring bob minor and that was sort of part of the point but halfway through we we came to realize that we couldn't and it, and it wasn't the right thing to do anyway and that some people just don't want to they want to learn to ring they want to learn to ring they want to become a member of the so local band they want to ring on a sunday and and in order to do that learn the ropes level two is a perfectly satisfactory point to finish and and we 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 saw that some people saw felt that because there was then level three and level four if we had to say look level two is we, we don't think you're going to do level three so that maybe um we had to we had to make it come across that actually learn the ropes level two was a success point and at that point you're a, you're a bell ringer and and you're a perfectly very very um good member of your local band and don't feel you have to learn plain hunt because then that is the start of something completely different so it, it really changed our mindsets in terms of um of, of where people um could stop so is, is there any magic to it um we don't think there is I mean, that, that any any student who comes through this it, it doesn't really matter whether they they stop at level two and become a, a member of their local band um or or if they come through and get to learn the rope level five and can ring a quarter to bob minor or quarter bills little bob and uh, and carry on in a, a sort of a career of change ringing it's it's all a success um, but I should stress, we did we did learn. I remember right back at the start of the first ART conference in South Wales, we saw Ruth Isles um, gave a talk, uh, and she was talking about a simile between ringing and cycling world. And she she said she was talking about how if if we made call changes the target, she thought that so many more people would ring and stick with ringing. And and we the St Martin's Guild people, we we sat there at the back thinking uh, rubbish. We can teach we can teach anybody to ring to learn to ring bob minor what on earth are you talking about thinking people might want to stop at, at call changes and and we realized we were wrong um and actually we, we invited ruth up to birmingham to, to the to the school and she came one saturday and we went to lunch and we talked for hours um and and realized that there was something in what she'd said so it, def it definitely changed our view so the benefits I'll talk about the benefits to the students and benefits to the helpers and benefits to the St Martin's Guild of this but first of all the, the benefits to the students the students get a lot of peer support learning with with others who are at the same level and who they get to know because it's the same people each week and and some of them actually even if they progress slightly more quickly than their their group 
we'll, we'll wait until the whole group moves up to the next level. They do that because they because they they help each other and bond. Of, co of course, you have very well qualified teachers um, who are skilled in themselves. You get so it's, it's it is good teaching, um, which of course helps. You get uh, good helpers because the, the helpers who come along, you are you are not trying to teach somebody um, plane hunt on the treble um, with people who can't ring bob doubles. You're teaching someone to bring plane onto the treble with people who can ring bob doubles um, and who can strike. Uh, and that makes a huge difference to how quickly you can do it. Um, in a way, it maybe it doesn't prepare you for ringing it with a band that's not very good at ringing bob doubles. Um, but at least if you know how to do it with a good band, you, you, you learn to ring it rhythmically, etc. We give a lot of resources. So we give the um, the new learners book the the um, to, to people. We have a, a program of, of the resources that we give to the students at different times. Um, and uh, and then there's benefits to the helpers as well, because the helpers all feel that they're giving something back. And, and there's, there's quite a few people who sort of are slightly unfulfilled in terms of thinking they haven't done it, they haven't done any training or they, they haven't taught anyone, and they couldn't do it. But if you but these these sessions are quite a good way of, of doing a, of, of feeling you've, you're, you're putting stuff back. And you do see that that they they come and do some some kaleidoscope bringing and you can, you can see the different way in which teachers teach and it filters back through other towers in the in the guild um and 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 helps people in their own ringing and it is sociable i mean it's a it's a it's a, it's two hours on a saturday and we, we tend to run um for about 50 minutes and then have a tea break and the and the each each of the towers we run it at has the box with the kettle and the biscuits and the, and 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 that that 15 minutes in the middle is 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 a key part of it and and i'm sure quite a lot of people wouldn't come uh, if it wasn't for that and that, i think they complain that i'm always a bit anxious to to get going again after the tea break and and other tutors are a bit more soft um but yeah it, it is sociable and, and we enjoy it we enjoy it saturday saturday for us is park run nine o'clock school 10.15 and that's the reason why it's at 10.15 not 10 because it gives people a chance to do park run and then still get to to church on time and then and then lunches after that so so it's good um it, it's good for the tutors um although you do get you do get people doing a lot of teaching and and you tend to specialize after a while tony dawes has been teaching at tower one now for 10 years it, it still does share the load because there are a number of tutors it's not just the same people so we've got a lot of teachers um, and we share it between us um and and most of the helpers go maybe once or twice a month and it works if you have enough helpers that's the ideal people can go one once or twice a month um and it for us it keeps us it keeps us teaching um it, it keeps it keeps us sharp and 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 the, right at the start we we the intention was to teach people to teach as well so we do quite a bit of of uh, of, of trying to get and we haven't done as much as we'd hoped to do uh, to be fair um of getting people to do their learner ropes um the module two so to, to learning to teach and then and this is an ideal way of giving people the opportunity to to get students and to get through and be mentored so we get people like tony and, and phil ramsbottom who act as mentors for teachers who can then teach in a very very nice um environment uh, with another teacher on hand uh, so it works really really well for, for teaching teachers and again uh, we think it's sociable and the whole school benefits it's a it's a it's a big social network so there are parties the end of end of term party everybody knows each other there is no doubt that local ringing has improved um, just by the injection of additional people who've been taught reasonably well uh, and just and just critical mass and the st martin's guild as a whole um has strengthened no end because of this um so it's had a fantastic impact and there's just a, a few pictures of the the certificates everybody people some people say oh certificates people don't like older learners don't like certificates everyone likes the certificates we make a big fuss of certificates and handing things out and it, it's always at the start of the 15 minute break we have the certificate session um and the pictures go up on the wall and the certificates go on the wall and everyone's really keen um and it's just it's just it's really good spin-off benefits i said i said earlier on that, that we charge um five pounds a week and uh, three pounds for concessions uh, for kids and concessions so 
we pay 250 pounds a year to each of the towers that we use and it, it's changed over time um one tower got a little bit fed up with it um because it's quite that that's quite an onerous thing because to run it in a perfect world you'd have you'd have four towers all of which are have got a bit of space because you need standards behind you want them to have free parking you want them to be on public transport routes uh, you want them to be easy going you want them to have sound control and you want the local band to not mind that there's this cuckoo of an additional load of people coming additional group of people with a key additional group of people who might forget to bling the bell down or whatever so so the local bands have got to be quite tolerant but but and that's where the money goes we 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 pay reasonably well to the towers that um, that have it. and and hansworth we which was um a bit down on its luck in terms of its decoration that the school completely redecorated re-roofed well did new ceiling painted new carpet um completely redecorated that tower uh, out of school funds uh, for the benefit of the local band so and we also spend 250 pounds a year on on ringing books for the students and of course art gets um gets quite a bit of money because we enroll everybody um, on learning the ropes and by the time we've got people through learning the ropes um, art has, has has benefited from that so that, that's a little bit old that 8250 that's a figure from two or three years ago I think Claire sort of worked out how much had gone back into ringing as a result of the school and it's it's getting on for ten thousand pounds but it's not all plain sailing it'd be wrong to say it's perfect um, because it isn't um there are issues and there are things that are difficult there's a certain degree you might think to to, to helpers and and tutors um do you suffer from um tutor fatigue well there is a bit of that uh, we haven't lost many particularly um but it can be uh, it can be it can be quite a commitment so we could we could always do with more people um but we but it, we get by um we haven't trained as many teachers as we'd hoped we'd, we'd hope to to have more and and there, there is some criticism um not within the St Martin's God I wouldn't say but from from others that that it's a little bit of a cookie cookie cutter <laughs> cookie cutter approach that we're sort of in, in a very very formulaic way um teaching people by by these these rules and and, and churning out churning out identical people who've all can ring but I don't think that's fair um, I don't think it's really fair. And also we can't, that, that that ideal at the start of having four towers all running concurrently on a Saturday morning, it's just we don't quite have enough people to do that all the time. It's much more common that we run three of the towers and we developed a, um, or Claire, I, when I say we, it's usually Claire. Um, so Claire, Claire McArdle. So, so we developed a, a rotation plan and, and what tends to happen is Tower A, which is the, the, the bell handling, which takes place at St Paul's Jewelry Quarter um, in Birmingham, which has got a schoolroom below and dumbbells and, and it's very, very well set up and a kitchen, etc. That that runs every single week. So we never miss out on the basic handling. Um, that happens every week. And then the others, the others rotate. So two of the others are happening. So you do two, two weeks out of three with the others. And Tower B, do we sort of have a Tower A plus as well, which upstairs at St Paul's, when people have got to being able to ring on their own, we then send them up to a to upstairs to ring on the, the proper bells, where, where we sort of bring two or three helpers helpers in and just give a lot of practice on ringing ringing two bells and then ringing rounds on three and then and then and and basic skills before they go to the, the full sort of kaleidoscope um so that's good and the and we also have what what has worked very well i think we thought we thought this would happen but we we didn't realize quite how much it would happen and what a benefit it would be in sustainability is that the students become the helpers um and 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 that's and that's really good because you you can i can i can run i often run the um the third or fourth tower and um, tower tower d and d and 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 the students go back foundation skills is, is almost always staffed with helpers who have who, who are also ringing at tower d so if you if you Going back a slide where I said we have have people doing only two weeks out of three. What tends to happen is the people at towers C and D or towers three and four will go back and be helpers at the other towers in their weeks off, and and that works really really well. Um, I'd, I'd say the biggest issue 
is is um is what happens when people come out at the end of the sausage machine is what once you've once you've once people are very used to going to the school every or bell school as they call it um once people are used to bell school and and can ring quarter peel of bob minor and, and they finished they're almost bereft um and and in in the perfect world you'd then have the next level on and and you'd 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 help you because the idea was well people then would go into their local bands and that's where you learn to ring grand triples and 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 and, and progress but but of course that that doesn't happen always um or often unfortunately and uh, and people think that they've that it, it, it there's no there's no succession plan there's nothing happens happens are oh, and it's difficult to say goodbye so that's that i think that's slightly unsatisfactory but that that, that point about students being helpers it, it it builds their own confidence because when you when you are progressing as you know once you you're still trying to do lots and lots of complicated things when you learn to bring plain hunt you're still you're still dealing with the, the complication of, of actually catching the sally all the time and when and actually having the opportunity every now and again to go back as a helper and just step down a couple of a couple of notches and just do some all you've got to do is turn up on a saturday morning and ring rounds for the people who learn to ring rounds that's quite good and it inspires the the students at the at the earlier towers to see that people who may have only learned to ring 12 weeks couple of months three four months before them are the helpers uh, and in some cases are the tutor um, and that gives people a lot of confidence um, and uh, again it, it helps the school we, we now need we now it is less onerous on on helpers if you've got helpers who who we know they're already free the students are already free on a saturday morning it's what they do um, so it's very easy to get them back and some of them are now tower captains um, and that is true i think we've got three towers in the St. martin's guild where the tower captain or ringing master is a graduate of the school um tim sunter who some of you may know who's on the the art management committee he he and his wife jenny um wanted to learn to ring because they had a silent tower in uh, in briarley hill and they applied to come to the school this was the first time that we taught people who were not um in the st martin school when the st martin school was still technically territorial and, and it's one of the reasons we changed it um so on, on the back of that they then taught a band at briarley hill and some of whom who came through the school and basically uh, uh ringing master deputy ringing master that it's in a tower entirely that has been taught by the Birmingham school of bell ringing um and technically isn't in um our area but it doesn't matter so credit where credit's due i've mentioned um some names already um this wouldn't happen if it wasn't for claire mccardle um who's who with that original concept and who does a lot of work and teaches a lot and uh, other people i could i could name a lot of people but as uh, tony door uh, is unstinting in his commitment to to tarry um janet horton steve horton phil ramsbottom arthur reeves do do more than their fair share they they put in pretty decent shifts um but as i said at the start we benefit from the fact that there isn't a culture of everyone going peel ringing on a saturday um tony gave up peel ringing ages ago um hates it um and uh as did phil so we we are fortunate that we've got lots of lots of decent uh, decent ringers who are very committed to helping other people and who don't go off ringing peels on a saturday that's only me i have a, I, i'll have a couple of saturdays when i'll go and do other stuff um but all the other times i would rather be on a saturday morning doing the park run school um lunch um option so so i'm sure you are all sitting there um thinking right we're going to do this uh we're going to do this and it's november now so we could start actually it's going to be difficult to start next year we're going to start at the end of the summer <laughs> um it was probably about about the size of it so so my advice would be in terms of trying to replicate that because that that might look all a little bit scary and all a little bit organized but ultimately it was started by people sitting around a table like that thinking yeah we could probably there is no reason why we could not do this and we started it small we started with one we started with two towers and then when we got to the first and when we showed that worked then we added another tower in the, the tower a people went on to tower b um and it and it gradually and it gradually got bigger and people saw that it worked and people saw that it was effective 
and people saw that they enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, so now it, it has become a very large operation, um, and it but it started small, and, and all those component parts of what it is are small pieces that could could be done uh, in them uh, on their own, uh, rather than in this sort of massive way. Um, so that's what happened, and um, that's the Birmingham School of Bell Ringing, founded 2013, and still going. That's it. So you can always go much as many that was questions. even better than a talk with the Central Council. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've been fascinated by the Birmingham School for years and years and years. It's really good to see it spelt out and described. I wish I could, maybe I could come and see it someday, but I'm really interested in the concept. Um, there's some questions come up in the chat already, and I'm right, sure... Okay, I'll, I, 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 didn't, I couldn't do it as I was going along. I was, okay. Yeah, right, so we go from the... Um, so do you yeah. want to manage your own question, Simon? I mean, I'm happy well, to moderate. Well, I'll it. certainly see. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll answer the ones that there started. Where did you, where did you distribute your flyers? Um, good question. I think we, I think we encouraged towers to put them on notice boards. We, we, we must. To be honest, I can't really remember. Um, there were, there were some more, more recently. We put, we put some in schools. Um, we, we certainly had some media. Um, but we, 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 and we, and, and friends. So, so there, there was no magic to that, uh, particularly. Um, it is, if St. Paul's is the A and A plus towers, does that mean handling skills are taught? Yes. Um, that the handling skills that the very, from the very start, the two dumbbells are in the, are in the schoolroom downstairs at St. Paul's and, and they, they, the students start there and, uh, and the sort of ring on a, on a simulated uh, bell. I think they don't even bother putting headphones on. They just ring with a bell. And then, and then once they can do that, they go, they go upstairs to, um, and, and have just, just to get a bit of confidence of actually hearing with a, with a bell making a noise and just to ring rounds on two, rounds on three. And we, we tend to pe keep people at St. Paul's until they can ring, um, ring rounds. And then they move off to, to, to the next tower somewhere else and do stuff that's to do with changing places, kaleidoscope exercises, etc. So, so yes, they are taught on on dumbbells. They're good. They're good. They're pretty good dumbbells. Um, have you considered Tower D people shadowing the tutors? Um, no, I hadn't thought of that. We hadn't thought of that. It, it I, I suppose, it happens to a certain degree because they because they see it, but it, it, that certainly would be a way of, of, of encouraging people and helping people. And when, when people, when people do get to, if they've been on a, on um, module two, the, the running a practice uh, one, um, they, they tend to get, they get mentored then by being able to run a practice at the school so we can help with, with lesson plans, etc. Something I, something I didn't mention is that we are quite disciplined in 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 turning up with a with a lesson plan so so once you take once you've taken a, a session on a saturday we'll we'll then all, all the tutors will will write up the notes and it's all in a, a database so you'll make notes about where where each student had got to so that when you're when you're picking up the following week it doesn't matter that you didn't take that group the previous week you'll just spot up exactly what's said in the notes. So so-and-so is struggling a little bit. We think they're not quite seeing this. Try this. Didn't, this didn't work. And, and you, you, so you can prepare. You can see exactly what happened last time. Often we do have continuity, um, but you, can't, you just can't do it all the time. So it does help that, you, that, we, that we keep notes and, and people don't have to then explain themselves. Oh, well, I did that last week. You know what they did last week. Um, what is the geographical spread of towers? We keep the, if, well, if you know, let's just think in terms of how far apart they are. None of them are more than about 15 to 20 minutes from Birmingham city centre. So they're within the, they're within the outer core. They're, they're, they're within, if you can picture the motorway network around Birmingham, the M42, M6, M5, all of the towers are within that motorway network. OK, so some of the students come out from outside the motorway network, but all the towers are within the motorway network. Um, do you have one ringer per bell in the association now? Well, we cheated in a way because we don't have towers. The St. Martin's Guild is no longer um, technically territorial. So we, we no longer say that's a St. Martin's Guild tower. People are St. Martin's Guild members. Um, and, and what that did, that St. Martin's Guild was 
the Diocese of Birmingham is a strange shape. It's got a panhandle that sort of sticks out in the northeast and goes all the way to, I don't know, York or something. Um, but it's, it certainly goes up into towards Leicestershire. And it, and it's not very, when I talked to the bishop about the fact that we were we were going to drop the um, our association with the diocese, he said, I don't blame you. I wish I could drop those towers as well. Um, so he got it. So so it is. So that that means we don't really mind if people come from to outside the, the old territorial boundary. It doesn't matter. But if we if we still did have that boundary, do we have one per bell? I, I think the answer is not quite. Um, but it, but it's 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 a hell of a lot closer. How many helpers do you have to call upon? I think there's a roster of between 50 and 100. Between 50 and 100. And uh, in a perfect world, everybody needs to go once a month, but um, some people do a bit more than that. And some people do it because they like it. I come in with another question, Simon. Yeah. So there's a, I mean, the, the brand, the brand's really interesting, isn't it? It's a brand you've created and it implies a unanimity of purpose and of mission that sometimes we don't always see in bell ringing. You know, people have different wants and needs and uh, different ideas what they want to get out of their life. Did you have to create that or did it evolve naturally or did you have to select people that, that bought into the vision? Um. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you mean by brand, particularly? Um, I, I, I think we benefit. In, it is quite, it is quite strong. I mean, the, the sort of city core and the and the core of the Samaritan School are, are are sort of fairly of one mind. There weren't many people who sort of said, "Come on, come on, buy this. This is going to work." It, it was. There weren't many. There weren't many naysayers, to be honest. I think it's it's relatively culturally coherent. That's where. Okay, and you don't get people coming in trying to take it in a whole different direction because they've got a great no. idea. You... No, not at all. No. No. Um, well, and so another... Okay, um, in the first year, were most to, or all of the students complete beginners or had some... Yes, so... So we started off, we started off some complete beginners. So we started Tower A with complete beginners and we started Tower C, I think, with people who were, who wanted to learn. We advertised for people who wanted to learn to plane hunt or something like that. So we started two towers, but not all beginners. And then when it, when it progressed to more towers, when it progressed to four towers, it meant that the Tower A people became Tower B and the Tower C, C people became Tower D. Now, of course, what also doesn't quite work is those people do not spend the same amount of time at each in each place so it doesn't work perfectly that that everybody it's not like a barn that everyone doesn't move on to the next station um you, and sometimes you get people who progress quite quickly and there's no vacancy at the tower above and, and that and that's sort that's slightly unsatisfactory um in, in a way and um, people sort of get stuck and 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 you have you have that difficult call about how long how long will you put up with when I, mean, I said at the beginning you you, you you have to be cruel to be kind to a certain extent if somebody has spent 10 weeks at tower a learning to handle they're not going to go all the way and it might not be for them and we are we will have that conversation and if, if somebody has spent 30 weeks at tower two they are not going to go on to tower three um so we so we have to be so we have to do that um, were any of the towers um, used already running some kind of ringing school? And if said no, they they weren't. There was there was nothing similar. So there wasn't. I mean, there, there was isolated teaching as you'd expect anywhere, but nothing quite like this. Are handling students already associated with a tower? Now that's a very that's a very interesting question. Sometimes yes. At the start. Um, there's there's far more far more towers in the St Martin's Guild now. Rather than teach somebody themselves, they will send them to the school, um, and and they do that because it's it's easier, it's more effective. Um, it, it means the practice doesn't have the the, the call rounds for the the learner or whatever, um, or certainly not the bell handling bit. So far more people now send their learners straight to the school. Um, the interesting one, of course, is where you get somebody who's just wants to learn to, to ring. 
they they put learn to ring Birmingham into Google, they find the school and they ask to get taught. So we encourage them from a very early stage. We find out, obviously, you ask them where they live um, and you have to match them with a band. And you want to integrate them with that band quite early. Uh, and because we, we don't want anybody to have their entire ringing life just to be just to be learning at the school. It, it just isn't efficient. You want somebody to be going back and practicing in their own tower. Now, of course, this is another area where it's not perfect by any means, because you don't want to send the school learners to the to weak towers, but you can't send them all to the best towers. And that's and that's quite hard to manage. Um, that is difficult to manage. So there are there are some there are some towers who are that are particularly good at absorbing school school students. And Harborn has an awful lot. Um, so student, do students still have a home tower, um, or are the? Uh, yes, they all. So so following. Yes, so they all have. They all then have a home tower. They they don't necessarily have a home tower when they're still at tower A, but by the time they're up to ringing rounds, we want them to have a home tower. And uh, do you encourage them back to their own towers? Yes, we do. Absolutely do. Because um, they've got to get practice uh, on their own bells in between coming to the school. Um, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. I haven't seen you for a very, very long time. Um, are your students encouraged to attend other practice nights during the week? Yes, they are. Um, um, do you think that the payment encourages? Yes. That, does a payment encourage commitment? And do you have discretion for people with low incomes? The discretion for people with low incomes is the concession. So we do make it three pounds uh, for concessions. And I think if there was if there was an absolute can't afford three pounds, we there's a concession below that which we would do. Yes, um, and, and for youngsters as well. And the five pound, the five pounds, absolutely, definitely, it makes people it makes people value it. it. I think it does more than just more than one thing. It makes the students value it. Definitely makes the students value it. Um, it, it gives a commitment because people have people have paid and, and they realize that people are putting in their time. And also it makes you if you're running a practice and the five or six students there have paid their money. And have turned up on time, you make sure you give them a decent experience. You put you put in there, you put in the I tend to do it in the car park before my park run. I tend to get, I, I, I turn up at 20 to nine and I sit in the car with my with my planner. And the notes from last week, and I plan my lesson in the car in the car park before park run, um, because you know, yeah, the people are, have paid. I mean, they have not paid a huge amount, but it's a commitment. So, and it works well for that. I mean, some some people, and no, no one queries. We we had felt, and that was slightly courageous thing to do at the start was decide to charge because, as we all know, charging for ringing doesn't doesn't happen very much. And when we had the first. Um, sort of wrap up at the end of the first year and we all met in the Woodman pub to have a sort of what did you think of that and we asked we said what do you think about the fact we charged you and they were, they were absolutely unanimous that yes can't believe it's only five pounds and we get the book we get a book as well <laughs> um, and everyone pays for we, we all put a pound in for coffee um, so the school the school makes a profit wrong word surplus and we don't really know and we give we don't really know what to do so so it work it's about right um it makes a surplus on tea and coffee because tea and coffee doesn't really cost that um but no one really minds and the money goes back to towers and we spend it on books and and it, and it works any other any other questions out loud any other questions in the chat no so do you think Grinders of questions, Simon. Hmm? <laughs> Grinders of questions. I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Can it be done? I mean, it's it it is urban. It's it's easy. It's in a way, it's easy to see how it can work if your towers are close together, and the more dis distributed your towers are. When we, when we, when one of the towers got a little bit not fed up it's not a fair thing to say but it was just a little bit onerous and we had to find it we we wouldn't i wouldn't want to have to find another towel we're lucky we have st paul's um jury quarter we're lucky one of them is claire's own tower harborn um and others are accommodating um i wouldn't want to find too many more and we have st martin's guild and and the birmingham area we have a lot of decent eights 
one of the reasons why we're we're hoping to build the Birmingham University of Bell Ringing, which is a, it's a grand name for a secular tower, um, which we're planning, um, which won't be in a church, because we really want to have a facility that's not in a church, um, that we can just use all the time, that is ours. Um, the the favoured location is is a is an existing domestic scale building on the edge of a public park um, in Birmingham in Northfield, where we'll we'll convert. We, the, the plan is to convert this house into the with the dump, dumbbells and, a, and maybe a little ring and a schoolroom and kitchen, all that sort of stuff, and then build a tower on the edge of the of that house. And you, you, I mean, you don't need a tower to be 80 feet tall. You just need a tower to be slightly higher than the bells. Um, Tulloch, Tulloch's obviously extremely efficient. So, so, um, so we're that's sort of going through the legal process at the moment. We intend to do that, and that will give us a lot of flexibility because then we can run we can run two or three towers there, sessions there every week. What would be a good rural? Um, um, sorry, Jen. Uh, do you pay maintenance to the towers if they need it? Um, they get there, there is a clause in the St Martin's St Martin's Guild Bell Restoration Fund, uh, when we changed the terms of the Bell Restoration Fund, um, to to um, to make sure that it doesn't have to be spent on bell restoration. It can be spent on other sorts of infrastructure. So the St Martin's Guild BRF made a decent contribution to the sound control at Harborne to enable the school to because the school was using Harborne so much. Uh, and it pays for ropes. It's paid for ropes at Edgbaston, um, and it's we, we changed the, the sort of way in which the trustees interpret requests. That that if the request comes from a tower which actively is involved in teaching ringers, then that application gets looked on much more favourably, certainly in terms of percentage, than any a, a tower that doesn't do any teaching. And that's sort of at the discretion of the trustees. But people get the point. So if a request comes in from Northfield or Harborne or one of the towers that the school uses, it's going to get looked favourably. What are house prices like in Prum? <laughs> Very reasonable. Less than Essex, crikey. Good questions, good questions, yeah. If there are no other questions, I'm going to wrap this up in a lot of minutes, but I just want to give people the chance to wave if they do want to ask anything else. Thank you again, Simon. Uh, I feel as if the gauntlet has been well and truly thrown down. Um, and <laughs> why not? 